For Krima Media's Polity, this is Sanel Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss his column titled, We Need to Find an Escape from Choiceless Democracy. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Professor, why are you continuously returning um, to criticize the media's focus on the African National Elective Congress? Do they not have the right to choose their forecast and reports and also analyze the candidates? No, they've got the right to write all sorts of empty things if they want to. But the thing is, what I'm saying is it's not helping the public to understand what is going on if you keep on dealing with personalities and not examining whether they have ideas for changing South Africa, for remedying the problems that we have, doesn't help us to know that this one is on the same slate as William Kize or Senzong Tsunu or whatever it happens to be. What we need to know is what are the ideas? What is the value of their candidature if they were to become president or deputy president? But frankly, I just think we're dealing with one part of South African politics. Uh, the ANC is declining. Uh, you obviously still have to write, write about them because they are the government. But to spend all this time on who is coming up and who is going down and there's a new candidate, so and so says I'm avail- he's available and volunteers and what, what, what. I think that that is not what politics is about. When I was involved, now I don't want to suggest that it was any good when I was involved, but but when I was involved, uh, there were people who saw a big difference between Thabo Mbeki and Chris Harney. And there were differences in the sense that Chris Harney was very much into mass struggle, things like this. And Thabo Mbeki may not have been against mass struggle, but he didn't come out, uh, he wasn't seen marching a lot, uh, like to be sure and things like that. So, you know, you had an idea of orientation that was different between the two. If there had to be a contest, there wasn't a contest, but I'm saying there was a sense that people lined up because of ideas. And when you now refer to an earlier period where the ANC members did not even imagine making money out of becoming leaders like we see now, are you not romanticizing? Well, yeah, when I was involved, <laughs> the golden age, and you know, the, the thing is, you didn't have anything to look forward to except getting a club or being tortured or locked up. Uh, And maybe some people had the foresight to understand that 20 years later, there would be these opportunities for making money. Now, I think at the time of negotiation, some people understood better than others how things would unfold. Like, I was involved in insurrection, so I wasn't thinking about the new civil service or about being a CEO of a state-owned enterprise. But some people understood that this was going to happen. So I think that there were different understandings and some people prepared them for this. I remember when I was at, used to be called Shell House, and some people were going off to Britain for a civil service course. And I looked at this and I had some contempt because I thought, hey, what are they wasting their time going to UK for this? We will have a different type of civil service. But I didn't understand how civil service worked, how the country's democracy would unfold. And I think it's a mixture. Some people didn't have in mind enrichment, but later I think some people did get the idea that if they got in some or other position, it would be good for them. So there were different experiences, but in the beginning, there wasn't much to look forward to except getting a very good smack. And you can see who wasn't in the struggle. They didn't have any scars on their face. They've got these smooth, the smooth skin that could be used as a for a beauty um, advert, you know, because they didn't get any clubs. And lastly, now, Professor, is it true that the, the liberatory vision 
and spirit has been lost? Well, I do think it's uh, it's been lost in the ANC. Now, I, I must qualify that because there are some people who are honest and they, unlike me, have decided that they will fight within from within. They will not give up on the ANC and they will fight, do their best to save the ANC and continue struggling to return it to the original vision, obviously modified in the present situation. But in general, I think people still talk about national democratic revolution, all of this, if they remember it when they're at a branch or something like that. But mainly they are interested in who gets what and things like that. And there isn't, if you look at the ANC documents, they're very, very empty. The economic ones are quite thorough, but uh, whether they get implemented like that, I'm not sure. But the political ones, there isn't that vision anymore. I'm afraid that people like Walter Sisulu, Nelson Mandela, Chris Haney would shrink from what they see of the organization to which they devoted themselves. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Polity about his latest column titled, We Need to Find an Escape from Choiceless Democracy.